Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to our second edition of our Flipped Classroom series. Our title today is Quadratic Inequalities, and today we're going to graduate on to two variables. The first inequality that I want to talk about is y greater than x squared minus 7x plus 10. So right off the bat, you'll notice that not only are we using the x's that we had yesterday, but we're also introducing the y variable into our inequalities today. My first question is, is the ordered pair 1 comma negative 2 a solution? As you might have guessed, we're going to substitute the 1 in for x and the negative 2 in for y. Thus we have negative 2 is it greater than 1 squared minus 7 times 1 plus 10. We'll do a little clean up on the right side. Let's see, 1 minus 7 is negative 6 plus 10 is 4. And we ask ourselves, is negative 2 truly greater than 4? That is false. Therefore, Our ordered pair, 1 comma negative 2, is not a solution. For my second question today, we're going to ask you, is the ordered pair 3 comma 1 a solution to this quadratic inequality with two variables? And we're going to go ahead and we'll substitute the 3 for x, the 1 for y, and we say 1 is it greater than... 3 squared minus 7 times 3 plus 10. A little clean up on the right side. I ended up with negative 2. And we ask ourselves, is 1 really greater than negative 2? I'd say true. Therefore, what kind of conclusion would you draw? I would say, therefore, the ordered pair 3 comma 1 is indeed a solution for this quadratic inequality. Now, when we try to solve a quadratic inequality with two variables, essentially what they're going to ask us to do is to simply graph the solution. So if we stick with the same inequality that we were working with a moment ago, y is greater than x squared minus 7x plus 10. Go ahead and grab your calculator. We're going to use a lot of calculator on these, and you'll notice right here in this window, I took a picture of what the table feature on my calculator looked like after I typed the equation into y equals. Um, so we're going to just for a moment pretend that it's an equation instead of an inequality. Type it into your calculator and then go to the table feature. Um, if you're a little foggy on how to get to that table feature, it's, uh, it'll, you'll hit the second graph button. Okay, second and then graph in the upper right hand corner. Now what we're going to do is we're going to just, uh, you've, you notice that I've moved up and down my table until I could identify, looks like my vertex is somewhere around 3.5. You'll notice that's right around when the y values start to turn around and, and start to uh, increase again. Now all we're going to do is we're going to take those ordered pairs that we see on our screen and start to plot them one at a time. And I'm going to start with the first ordered pair up here at the top of my screen, 0, 10. We'll put a nice point up here, 1, 4. Uh, 2 comma 0, 3 comma negative 2, and so forth. And we're going to get ourselves a nice, uh, what I call a skeletal form of our parabola. Now the next uh, important question we want to ask ourselves is, do we want to use a solid line to draw our parabola or a dashed or dotted line? So it's, it, it's hard to... Um, Usually we get so excited, we just want to draw our parabola in and draw a solid line. But you'll notice here, if you look at our original symbol, it simply says greater than. That implies that we want to use a dashed or dotted line here as we draw our parabola. I'm going to try to dip down just a hair to show that the vertex is a little below those points. I'm going to come back up. And so we've got a nice dashed dotted line with the arrows at the end. Now, for instance, if we had... If the inequality had said greater than or equal to, now that's when I would start to use that solid line. But I'd better erase that before we go any further. 
Okay. Now the very last thing we need to do is we need to decide where to shade. Essentially, do we want to shade inside the parabola or do we want to shade outside the parabola? And here's my rule of thumb. I like to pick a friendly ordered pair that lies somewhere inside the parabola. Technically, you could pick a point that lies on the outside of the parabola. And the only thing you can't do is you don't want to pick a point that actually falls on the parabola itself, like 6, 4. You want to stay away from those points. But I think it's going to make your life easiest if you pick one that falls in the middle. You'll notice I've picked the point 4, 2. That's what I consider my test point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to substitute the 4 in for x, the 2 in for y, and then simply ask myself, is 4, 2 a solution? Does it satisfy this particular inequality? And so we have 2 is greater than 4 squared minus 7 times 4 plus 10. Is 2 really greater than, let's see, 16 minus 28 is going to be negative 12 plus 10 is negative 2, I believe. Uh, don't laugh at me if I screwed that up. But anyway, we ask ourselves, is 2 really greater than negative 2? I would say that's true. Therefore, every point that lies on the interior of this parabola is considered a solution. And what we want to do is we want to shade in this entire region right here all the way to the edge of our graph paper. And at this point, we have finished our first problem. We've identified the solution. Um, you'll notice there's many solutions. There's technically an infinite number of ordered pairs that fall within this region, and every one that falls within there is a solution. Let's get ready to go try another one. For our second problem, we are going to tackle y is greater than or equal to negative 2x squared. There it goes. Uh, plus 5x plus 3. Now even though we have a coefficient now in front of the x squared, it shouldn't really make our job that much harder because we're going to rely on our calculator to generate this table of values. So again, just to reiterate, our first step is we're going to pretend for a moment that this is a quadratic equation rather than an inequality, and we're going to go to our calculator in y sub 1, and we'll enter in the equation negative 2x squared plus 5x plus 3. Then we'll go second graph. That'll take you to the table feature of your calculator. And um, I'm going to ignore that first point, negative 2 comma negative 15, because it doesn't quite fit on my graph. But it looks like all the other points are going to fit on there nicely. Okay, I went ahead and I plotted my points already, and you notice they're not quite as symmetric as you would typically expect from a parabola. And the reason is, is because of that negative 2. It's kind of throwing things out of whack a little bit, but that's okay. Now, after we get these points plotted, our, our next question is, do we want to draw a solid line with our parabola or a dotted dashed line? Because you'll notice we do have the equals to sign here along with our greater than sign, we are going to draw a solid parabola. And I'm going to just kind of play connect the dots here the best that I can. And we'll loop around and we'll come back down through. So there's our solid parabola. The last thing we now have to decide is, do we want to shade inside this parabola or do we want to shade outside of that parabola? So we're going to pick, I'm going to pick a nice friendly point. You'll notice it looks like 1 comma 1 falls on the interior and that's a nice point to work with. So using 1 comma 1 as my test point, we'll substitute 1 in for y and ask ourselves, is that greater than or equal to negative 2 times 1 squared? plus 5 times 1 plus 3. Uh, negative 2 plus 5 is 3. 3 plus 3 is 6. Is 1 greater than or equal to 6? I would say false. Therefore, points on the interior of the graph are not solutions, and therefore all points on the outside of this parabola are solutions. Now notice, I'm, I'm trying to shade in all of my graph paper right to the outer edges, and we'll say, okay, everything on the outside of that parabola is a member of our solution set. So just to reiterate, we, we, we chose that we, we said we needed a solid line because of the equal sign underneath the greater than sign. And then we picked a nice test point, one that was friendly to us. You could have picked, uh, you know, a point up here or a point down here or here. I just tried to pick the friendliest point possible. Well, we've got two down. Let's go get one more. 
Our, our third problem has a little bit of a bear trap in it. You'll notice that the y variable is not isolated yet. And that's our first goal is to isolate the y and then to rewrite it in standard form. So I'm simply going to subtract the 12 from both sides. And I've got x squared minus x minus 12 is greater than or equal to y. Now the last trick I'm going to do is I want to try to rewrite it so that the y is on the left side. I think you're going to be more comfortable with that. Now as I rewrite this, I'm going to turn the entire equation around. We call it our turnaround method. And now I'm going to say y is less than or equal to x squared minus x minus 12. Um, similarly, if we were to say, um, as, a, as a side example, if I said 6 was less than x, and I wanted to turn that around, I could simply say x is greater than 6. And I think you'll agree that both of those statements are equivalent. And uh, just when you want to put the variable, move it from right to left, we've got to turn that inequality sign around. Okay, now that we've got the y by itself and we wrote it in standard form with y on the left side, we're ready to rock and roll and we'll pick up the pace just a little bit. You notice we've already typed the uh, equation into our calculator, we've gone to the table, and it looks like the vertex is somewhere between x equals 0 and x equals 1. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to plot those points the best I can. My negative 12s are going to spill off the bottom of my page a little bit, but we'll kind of approximate where they go and we'll still get a nice looking picture. Once we get our points plotted, our next decision is do we want a solid line or a dashed line? And because again, because we've got the greater than, or I'm sorry, the less than or equals to, folk emphasis on the equals sign, we're going to go with a solid lined parabola. And I'm going to start as far north as I can. We'll swoop down, we'll go through our vertex, and then we're going to swoop back up and head back north. Okay, we've got our solid line. Our final decision is to decide whether we want to shade on the interior of the parabola or the exterior. Now you'll notice, perhaps my favorite point on the entire Cartesian coordinate system here is the origin, 0, 0. That'll be our friendliest point to plug back in, and we'll see if it gives us a true or false statement. So I've identified 0, 0 as my test point. We'll substitute that in. Is 0 less than or equal to 0 squared minus 0 minus 12? Is 0 less than or equal to negative 12? I would say false to that statement. Therefore, any point on the interior of this graph is not a solution. Only the points on the outside or the exterior of this parabola are solutions. And we'll shade in everything that we can see here. And covering, going right to the edges of my graph paper. And we've now solved our third and final quadratic inequality with two variables. Well, I hope you've had uh, good luck taking notes. Uh, feel free to pause, rewind, and rewatch this uh, as many times as needed, and uh, we'll see you in class tomorrow. Good luck.